Hi, I am Aisha Siddiq, uh, a PhD student working with Dr. Khaza Anwar al Haq at the University of Missouri. Today, I will be presenting our work on improving reliability of uh, spiky neural networks through threshold, fault aware threshold voltage optimization. I will start from the motivation towards spiky neural networks and their hardware accelerators by uh, systolic area. Uh, uh, spiky neural networks, spike systolic SNNs, and then I'll talk about their reliability issues, vulnerability to um, hardware faults, and um, the related work in this area, their limitations, the research challenges that we want to address with some novel contributions. I will talk about the methodology um, for mitigating those faults and that we propose, and then I will um, present some interesting results and conclude the presentation with some interesting takeaways. So these spiky neural networks have bio-inspired neural networks um, or they're inspired from the human brain and then uh, they, ha they have uh, spike-driven computations uh, and they are the third generation of artificial neural networks. So because of being spike-driven they have high algorithmic performance at low power. And usually what happens inside them is like when uh, a presynaptic uh, neuron generates a spike that travels to the um, uh, postsynaptic uh, uh, neurons and uh, trigger their action potential. And the spike is uh, generated only when the membrane potential is um, higher than the threshold voltage VTH. And the spike that are generated, these are basically multiplied uh, with the weights uh, for have weighted activations. So there's an emerging increase in the uh, trend of spiking in neural network hardware. We have Loihi, uh, Spinnaker, True North, uh, systolic arrays. Uh, so these are some neuromorphic and systolic hardware accelerators. But we are we will be focusing on the systolic area accelerators in this presentation. Now, what are the systolic area SNN accelerators? They are basically uh, a 2D system, uh, array of processing elements. So they process uh, the, all the computations in parallel. So there is a high parallelism in each core uh, for systolic uh, SNNs, and that gives uh, them an advantage over neuromorphic accelerators, and they are more suitable for systolic uh, spiking convolution neural networks because they have good accuracy as compared to the SGDP algorithms um, for SNNs, but they uh, uh, they needs to be speed, speed up. We uh, that we can do with this one, with this systolic array. So in this case, like we are considering base stationary systolic array. So the active activations only move from top to bottom, but they are processed in the time steps. Time steps are the indicators at TS over here. Uh, the good advantage thing about systolic SNN is that the uh, data can be reused when they we have large matrices. So this this is a good thing. Now, because uh, SNNs uh, follow leaky integrate and fire neurons, so the uh, hardware for them, uh, the systolic arrays, they are also uh, built in this way that they follow this principle. So, uh, because SNNs does not have multiply, so we have only add and shift operations in the processing element. So we have only we can only see an accumulator or fixed point adder or subtractor or the internal counter. The internal counter is basically for counting the number of the spikes in a time step. So here we are showing that in uh, time step one, like we have only one spike and then we in times to two we have no spike. So in case of uh, uh, when uh, systolic SNS, we can achieve a 47x energy efficiency as computer systolic ANNs. But uh, similar to systolic ANNs, systolic SNS are vulnerable to hardware faults and hence their deployment in safety critical applications is very challenging. The hardware faults are basically uh, um, most commonly the uh, manufacturing defects that can be the stuck at faults. Stuck at faults are just like uh, the value does not change, uh, so the bit is stuck at some value. And uh, for every execution cycle, whenever we map uh, the layer or a new matrix that um, gets this uh, affected by the fault. So this is significantly reduces the accurate classification accuracy. Such faults are detected and located using the post fabrication testing because these are the manufacturing defects. Then we, uh, when uh, higher the number of faulty manufactured chips, uh, so the problem is if we discard them, that reduces the yield. Uh, significant. So some uh, related, uh, state of the art works have investigated the fault availability of uh, in the spiky neural networks, but uh, they did this uh, at the software level. For example, um, I, uh, 
in the first case like uh, the fault variability analysis with different coding schemes have been done um, for these synaptic circuit faults in the second case like we have fault injection in the transistor level of LIF neuron but uh, that is not um, uh, for the SNN itself and in the third case like we have uh, fault mitigation with estrocrite self repair mechanism so we are changing the structure of SNN uh, for this but um, we uh, this, the uh, fault variability in systolic SNNs is not explored so far consequently there is a huge research gap in mitigating the um, for hardware faults in them. So now but before proceeding further with the uh, extensive fault variability and uh, fault mitigation, uh, we uh, have carried out a small motivation case study to investigate and leverage the impact of stack at faults and they are injected in 30% processing elements of a 256 cross 256 systolic area. So we observed that in case of amnest, uh, the when we retrain a systolic SNN with a change in VTH from 1.0 to 0.55, the accuracy is 99%. But when we change the VTH to 0.45, the accuracy is accuracy loss is 73 percent that's a lot now in case of devious gesture when we have uh, retraining with the change in vth from 1.0 to 0.45 like in the initial training it was 1.0 now it is 0.45 in retraining the result is like we have 99 percent accuracy but when we change the vth to 0.7 in retraining the accuracy is 60 percent the the accuracy loss is 60 percent that's a lot now let's talk about this when uh, the circuit fault is in 60% processing elements of a 256 to cross 256 historic SNN. So in case of MNIST, uh, when we change uh, VTH from 1.0 to 0.7 and retrain, so we get 99% accuracy. But um, retraining the same order with 0.5 gives 60% accuracy loss. Likewise, in DVS gesture, like uh, retraining uh, with a change in VTH from 1.0 to 0.7 gives accuracy of 99%. But the accuracy loss is like 55% when we have VTH 0.5. So when we are changing the VTS, the Basically, the, uh, the performance uh, or the uh, retraining accuracy is changing um, in the presence of faults. So, uh, and sometimes like it gives us good accuracy, sometimes it doesn't give us good accuracy. So, how to find an appropriate threshold voltage for fault mitigation in systolic SNNs? To address this challenge, uh, we uh, in first in extensively analyze the fault variabilities uh, uh, to stuck at faults in systolic SNNs by weighing the location of the fault weights, number of faulty processing elements, and size of the systolic array. And then we develop an algorithm for mitigating the stuck at faults while we optimize the threshold voltage uh, in the uh, retraining phase. And uh, we optimize threshold voltage in the hidden layers of our fault mitigation. Now to understand like uh, how we optimize the threshold voltage, let's consider R as a ratio between uh, membrane potential and threshold uh, voltage. So it's just like a Z is equal to R minus 1. So it's like Z is equal to V over um, capital V minus 1. So uh, when uh, and if we say that O is the output spike whenever the membrane potential exceeds threshold voltage. So it's like it is 1 when Z is greater than 0. Otherwise it is 0. And uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we approximate the gradient delta O over delta Z with the surrogate function during the error, propaga uh, error back propagation in the retraining phase. Uh, that is similar to initial training. And in this equation, we have gamma as a constant denoting the maximum value of the uh, surrogate function. Now we took, uh, we did some couple of uh, derivations where we um, uh, found the, uh, th like how we update the threshold voltage for every layer. So that's the equation for here. Uh, and then uh, we have the gradient of the threshold voltage that we compute and that's the, uh, in the form of this equation that we use and how we utilize these equations. We have an algorithm for fault mitigation through fault aware threshold voltage optimization where we first identify what are the indices of the pre-trained pre weights that map to the faulty processing elements in this historic array. Then we set the, the values at those indices to zero. After that, uh, like basically this uh, setting them as zero is just like a pruning and in the uh, at the hardware level the, we are basically bypassing the processing element with a multiplexer so we have a multiplexer next to the accumulator here 
then um, by passing one property processing element result in the pruning of multiple uh, pre-trained weights due to the reuse of historic assonance in case of heavy data processing so that is why uh, like um, there it needs to be uh, uh, something that uh, something else so we we update the unpruned weights during back propagation and while we do so we um, have threshold voltage optimization but we ensure that only the unpruned weights are um, updated so at the end of every retraining epoch here in line number 30 we are setting the uh, the weights uh, map to zero in the first step again as zero uh, then in the end we are checking the classification accuracy uh, and um, uh, finding uh, uh, like if that exceeds our desired threshold or not now for our experiments we have a parametric leaky integrated and fi fired um, uh, PLIF based resonant uh, that is uh, basically to uh, uh, that basically learns the time constant and uh, in, uh, increases the uh, training time of SNN so that is why we prefer this is a very recent state of the art work uh, for um, in the data sets we have MNIST and MNIST and DVS gastro data set so on the only difference between the architecture of these data sets is that in case of MNIST and, M and MNIST we have two times repeated set of convolutional batch norm spiking of neuron and pooling layer but in case of dvs gesture we have um, uh, two five times repeated set of these uh, layers otherwise the architecture is same in both cases and the baseline accuracy before fault injection for mnist is 99 percent and also for the nmnist but in case of dvs gesture we achieve like 97 percent accuracy we use a system 256 cross 56 historic area where we inject the faults as in circuit 0 and circuit 1 in the uh, different output bit positions of the accumulator because accumulator is the main processing block of the uh, spiking neural network then we have fault mites and that um, and that we use uh, for uh, and uh, we are in Identify okay, uh, these are the processing element that needs to be faulty in for this set of experiments. So that's the fault map is. Then we have some fault uh, mitigation algorithms for the comparison fault aware pruning, where we prune only the indices which map to the faulty processing elements. And then we have fault aware pruning with the initial training. We do not uh, like change the threshold voltage in this case, we just adopt the same uh, threshold voltage and time stress. So we have a mode stimulation methodology uh, where we first generate the SNN model and we uh, and train that um, with SNN model configuration uh, and uh, the structure parameters like VTH and time steps. And then we inject the faults in that, that SNN and map that to the systolic array. Uh, like, uh, so basically after this like we are doing the fault training like which um, uh, indices needs to be zero and then we are doing the retraining using our algorithm so uh, we are running all these experiments on gpu we are only using systolic array for the fault mapping for fault validity analysis we consider the uh, accuracy versus fault bit for location so we uh, inject the fault at the different uh, bit position like msp most significant bit and ls below the least significant bit we observe that the circuit fault in msp causes more accuracy loss in its historic SN as compared to circuit fault in uh, uh, lsps if the reason is that like we uh, reuse the historic area for different layers so single unmasked uh, circuit fault in a processing element of a particular layer uh, affects all connecting nodes in the subsequent layers as decreasing the overall accuracy then so uh, when we change the number of faulty processing elements uh, we uh, that are faulty we observe that even like eight faulty processing elements can contribute to um, a 99 percent uh, like accuracy drop from 99% to 50% in MNIST and to 47% in NMNIST and uh, like from 97% to 44% in DVS gesture. So that's a huge accuracy uh, drop. And with the increase in the number of processing elements, the accuracy drops significantly uh, here. We observed that structure for in some small size historic area causes more accuracy loss as compared to the large size historic area. Uh, for example, when we have four only faulty processing elements in a 8 cross 8 historic area, that is like four only 16 processing element, the accuracy loss is like 89% in MNIST, 92% in NMNIST, and 93% uh, in DVS gesture. There's a lot of uh, accuracy loss. And when we talk about um, uh, 256 cross 256, where we have uh, 6536 processing elements in a historic area, 
so uh, we, if we have only four forty processing elements, the accuracy loss is sixteen percent um, in MNIST, seventeen uh, percent in MNIST, and thirty three percent only in DVS gesture. So that's a very small. So the reason is basically the small size systolic a, a, a SNN um, has to be reused multiple times uh, as compared to a larger one. So this uh, increases the reoccurrence of the uh, circuit faults in every cycle. So this basically shows the uh, optimized VTH for each hidden layer in our network. So we have injected the foils in 10%, 30%, 60% and of the processing elements of a 256 cross 256 systolic array, and we observe that optimizing VTH for every hidden layer helps in achieving the baseline accuracy. And um, VTH is optimized for initial spiking uh, convolutional and spiking con uh, fully voltage uh, connected layers but that is higher other than, than the other layers because this is to ensure that the redundant spikes do not travel to the output layer so or through uh, the network now for fault injection in 10 percent 30 percent 60 percent processing elements of 256 cross 256 systolic array we uh, uh, in, investigated um, uh, the accuracy loss so the accuracy loss is high with an increase in the fault rate and when the number of faulty processing elements are high and uh, but a fab fab id and fab fold all help in improving the classification accuracy however with even for fab and fab id fab id we were not able to achieve the baseline accuracy with 60% of the faulty processing elements but we can see over here that even with uh, Falvold we achieve the baseline accuracy. So with Falvold we can uh, see that it is applicable to both static and neuromorphic data set because it can achieve the baseline accuracy in MNIST and uh, DVS gesture and also the MNIST classification. Now when we talk about classification accuracy versus number of uh, EPOS we observe that Falvold is 2x faster than FAPIT in mit mit uh, fault mitigation. Uh, for example, with MNIST, like FAP IT converges with baseline accuracy at 25 uh, epochs, but FALVOLT uh, uh, converges in 10 epochs. And FAP IT converges with 50 epochs, um, but FALVOLT converges with 25 epochs in DBS gesture data set. And in case of NMNIST, the uh, FALVOLT uh, achieves baseline accuracy in 2x less number of epochs as compared to FAP IT. So we can say that FAL world is faster. So in summary, uh, we observe that as solid SNS are vulnerable to faults and even 2.012 percentage of faulty processing element that's a very small number can lead to a significant accuracy loss in 256 cross 256 systolic SNN uh, but if we apply our proposed fault away threshold voltage optimization we can mitigate the faults even when uh, there is a fault rate of up to 60 percent with a negligible drop in the classification accuracy that is just as low as 0.1 percent and we observe that our file world is faster as compared to the state of the art mitigation techniques uh, that's like fault away pruning and fault we are pruning without threshold voltage opt optimization. Thank you so much for your time. Please feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, my email address is aisha.siddiq at mail.missouri.edu.